A number of fund managers and billionaires have been warning about a slowdown in the economy during the last few months. A billionaire hedge fund manager is one of them. The ramification of the Fed's actions have recently been the subject of a warning from Chamath Palihapitiya. We saw that would happen after the Federal Reserve issued enormous amounts of money into the economy. When inflation began to rise, the financial market soared to all-time highs, and speculating became too risky. The economy is heavily influenced by the Fed. The Fed's response to rising prices will be the risk in the future. Many fund managers, economists, and ordinary investors have expressed concern about this. In this video, Chamath will explain why he believes that investors will no longer be concerned about inflation. Welcome to Financial Market TV. If you're new to the channel and enjoy content like this, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Also, please don't hesitate to share your comments down below and give this video a like. Let's get started. According to him, investors should be looking at a totally different indicator. The Fed is resolute about shrinking its balance sheet and hiking interest rates to battle inflation in a worrying turn of events. Inflation has been criticized by millions of people all around the world as not being temporary. Yet it appears that those fears are self-fulfilling prophecies. The Fed is overwhelmingly hawkish as a result of the opinion's popularity. Just like the Fed's reaction in March of 2020, the Fed may be overreacting again. But on the other hand, Chamath believes that inflation may turn out to be more temporary than people expect simply because the Fed may overreact. One famous investor named Jeremy Grantham has been warning of a market crash for America's super bubble. He explained how the market has been stabbed by COVID money printing, unexpected inflation, and the promise for higher interest rates. The phrase super bubble is used because Grantham called 2020 quote unquote an epic bubble. And he also called 2021 another bubble. We would currently be in a bubble squared or a super bubble. I personally don't listen to Jeremy Grantham because he's essentially a broken clock. A broken clock says the same time every day and will be right two times a day. In the case of Grantham, it's unclear whether his money is where his mouth is. Grantham, on the other hand, does make some good arguments from time to time. By all accounts, the U.S. economy as in is a poor spot. According to Chamath, the Fed would likely delay its response, potentially leading to a recession in the U.S., the government has printed $10 trillion in money and the stock market has likewise retreated by $10 trillion. A net money outflow could eventually become negative if equities continue to plummet and interest rates continue to rise. The fact that growth stocks and cryptocurrencies have plummeted in value in recent months demonstrates this. David Sachs, a well-known venture capitalist, discussed why a recession is on the way on the All In podcast on January 22nd and Chamath concurred. The most important factor that is pointing towards a potential recession is bifurcation, or in other words, one division in the global economy, you might think that interest rates are increasing around the world, but that's not the case. While the U.S. Fed has been increasing interest rates, China has actually been lowering them. This is concerning for one reason. The Fed raising interest rates could indirectly crash China's economy, which is currently in a weak position, because China represents such a significant part of the economy. America's economy would suffer as well if China's economy collapsed. This is a problem, because China's real estate industry is currently through a big deleveraging process, which involves corporations selling assets quickly to lower their debt, not only with Evergrande, China's second largest real estate developer, but also with a slew of other companies. We've seen this happen. Omicron is also having an impact on China at the same time as this. Shutdowns have been strictly enforced by the Chinese government. China's economic growth is fast declining as a result of these two reasons. And as a result, Chinese authorities are in a state of panic. We need a reasonably loose monetary policy, according to Yu Yongding, an economist who earlier advised People's Bank of China. How much we loosen depends on economic conditions, but the policy direction is this. The People's Bank of China will likely cut the bank's reserve requirement ratio as well. Its reserve requirement ratio, or RRR, is the percentage of deposits that banks must hold on to. In this example, the RRR is 8%. If the reserve requirement goes down to 6%, then the bank can now loan or invest 2% of its excess reserves. On the flip side, if the RRR goes up 10%, banks will have to sell a portion of their holdings to meet the requirements. China's reserve requirement used to be 12% before they lowered it to 115 in December 2021. 
That means the banks now have 0.5% excess capital to invest and loan out. Such a move signals that the Chinese economy is struggling and that artificial cash flows are necessary to keep the economy running. An anonymous Chinese policy insider told Reuters, We definitely need to loosen policy as a downward pressure on the economy is relatively possible. Lian Ping, a chief economist from Z Investment, expects one or two more RRR cuts this year. That might sound like a lot, but some economists expect even more turmoil, such as Su Hong Kai, a deputy director of a Chinese Economic Policy Commission. Su Hong Kai believes that the RRR will be cut by at least three times in 2022. The Fed of the United States is one of the reasons why more rate cuts may be required. The value of the U.S. dollar will rise when the Fed raises interest rates. This is due to the fact that holding the dollar would result in higher relative returns. As a result, in comparison to the Chinese currency, people would have more dollars. Not only that, but when the Chinese government lowers interest rates, it causes the yuan to drop. This is detrimental to the Chinese yuan because investors and institutions have been selling the Chinese yuan for U.S. dollars. So while the Fed is raising and the Chinese government is lowering, the U.S. dollar will go up while the Chinese yuan will go down. The People's Bank of China is under a lot of strain as a result of this. According to the PBOC, it will concentrate on its own economic crisis, but analysts around the world believe that it will not be able to do so. So in 2018, a similar situation occurred in the U.S., which resulted in a small manufacturing downturn. During this time, China's GDP grew at the slowest rate in 28 years. So how did this all come about? In the midst of a trade war in 2018, Jerome Powell boosted interest rates, causing the Chinese economy to decelerate significantly. As the global economy decelerated dramatically in 2019, the Fed was forced to decrease interest rates. As a result, the manufacturing sector in the U.S. fell into a minor recession. We're currently in a situation that's similar to the 2018 recession, but with the possibility of being worse. One week after predicting a recession, Chamath came even more bearish than before. This is because in addition to China, Germany is also showing signs of a slowdown. Germany cut 2022 GDP growth forecast to 3.6 from 4.1% before. The German economic minister Robert Haddock cited Germany's ongoing struggles with the pandemic as one of the main reasons for the slowdown. Germany's National Statistics Office also predicted that Germany's output for the fourth quarter of 2021 will decrease by 0.5 to 1 percent. Jerome Powell, the chair of the Fed Open Market Committee or FOMC, stayed focused on rising interest and reducing asset purchases, which supports his argument in a big way. Some investors may believe that if the Fed boosts interest rates, the market will be close to a bottom. This, however, is not the case. Future occurrences are priced by market prices, which are forward-looking. According to the efficient market theory, the market is relatively efficient. According to the efficient market theory, all prices are based on the available data. The hypothesis is not completely true, but it's still relevant to a certain degree. Investors know that rate hikes are coming in. That's being reflected in the market. Right now, Chamath found out that the market actually tends to increase after rate hikes occur. That being said, perhaps rate hikes are already being priced in, and it's time to start dollar cost averaging into the market. Raising rates is necessary to cool down inflation, but doing so has devastating consequences. Powell adamant claims reaffirmed his thesis. This inflation will only last a short time. If the global economy slows down, as China has shown, then inflation might swiftly drop down as the economy slows. The prominent hedge fund investor Bill Ackman has been lobbying the Fed to boost interest rates even higher than projected. In the bond market, Ackman has a short position and would benefit if the Fed listened to him. However, that doesn't come as a surprise because Ackman is known for manipulating the market in March of 2020. He ranted on seeing this year about how COVID was going to get worse while cashing out all of his short positions and going long in the market. As a result, we know that a recession is possible, but it does not always simply or imply a catastrophic market crash. The S&P 500 indexes fell by 18% in 2018 due to a minor recession in the United States. I don't think that's a lot of information. One of the reasons that this is there is a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Not only that, but plenty of tech stocks have already crashed by humongous amounts. 40% of the stocks on the Nasdaq have crashed at least 50% from their highs. That level of decline is almost in line with previous economic disasters. Perhaps the bottom is close by for the market. He believes that once big tech goes down 10-15% to 15 more, the market 
bottom will be nearby. To make matters worse due to supply chain difficulties, businesses have ordered too much inventory. This is battling him because there will be a huge lot of goods sitting in the warehouse if consumer demand does not match the excess inventory coming soon. On the All In podcast, Chamath recently spoke with a supply chain specialist named Ryan Peterson on how this problem could deepen the recession. Peterson, who is the CEO of Flexport, detailed how he believes that businesses may have ordered too much inventory. The interesting part of this market downturn is that large percentages of the crash is instigated from people hedging their portfolios. Almost all top tier fund managers are hedging their portfolio in some shape or form. The initiation of these hedges is likely negatively impacting the market. For instance, Buffett is hedging his portfolio with cash, while Kathy Wood, Bill Ackman, and Chamath is hedging with short positions. These hedges have a considerable impact on the market and could be the driver for the current correction. Since the 2008 recession, Chamath has observed the most hedging activity he has ever seen. The fact that there is simply too much cash on the sidelines will most likely not endure long if the market continues to plummet. Because as market prices are forward-looking, I will most likely begin dollar cost averaging into the crash, which might not be as modest as 2018 correction now that prices are correcting and rate increases are being priced in. When inflation cools down, I believe market will reach an inflection point and rate increases will halt if not reverse. Extrinsic factors such as worldwide economic downturns from China are difficult to predict when that exact time will occur. If that happens, I'll simply up my dollar cost average significantly if it does. So, do you agree with Chamath? Thanks for watching the whole video. Again, if you're new and like this type of content, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave a comment down below and hit that like button. Also, click on the notification bell to get updated on our weekly uploads. See you in the next video.